Johnny, my boy, Johnny, 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 Johnny. Thank you. Good thing. Man, that almost turned bad. Uh, one time I did a live stream for like five minutes without any sound. So thank the sounds there now. Thanks, Johnny, for pointing that out to me before I got too far. Jenny, it looks like there's still no sound. Is there sound now, guys? I think there's a little bit of delay on the video. So is there sound now? Yeah? You got sound on it on your end? I got another comment that said no sound. Okay, cool. All right, Jenny says there's sound. All right, guys, well, you didn't miss too much. I was just talking about my mustache, um, honestly. I was just saying that last time it was all fucked up on stream, so this time I decided to fix it, make it look a little better. So, um, something I wanted to float around. How much BTC would you give me if I were to shave this off on a live stream? We're just going to let that float around. I don't know how much you can contribute or how many of your friends want to see it. My girlfriend's getting tired of the stash. Now, personally, what I was saying is uh, I like... I've never gotten a compliment from a female about this stash. Let me just say that. I've had it for like two years. Um, never gotten a compliment on the stash from a female. But anyway, everywhere I go, dudes are like, Oh, man, that's a killer stash, bro. I love your stash. But, I mean, you guys saw it last week. It's all, it gets all messy, and it's really hard to maintain. If I don't sit there and curl it for like hours on end... It just looks like ass. So I'm kind of getting tired of it. want to shave it off. I'm going to see if we can do some kind of BTC rally for it. <laughs> um, but outside of that, guys, first thing I want to do before we get into charting market structure, which we got market structure right behind us here, first thing I want to do is shout out to my supporters. Guys, we got G-Man. He's a brand new supporter. You can see his name is green there in the chat. And my first supporter, Andrew Groom. Man, Andrew Groom, thank you for being the first, uh, first supporter. I still have not got in touch with you. I have an NFT that I need to send you, bro. I made this for my first YouTube member. So you can see right here. Oh, first YouTube member. Oh, here I am. There we go. Yeah, that's you, bro. That's you, uh, Andrew Groom. You are my first member. So you get a really cool one-of-one one NFT. And my other supporters so far, guys, we got a couple of them. You guys need to plug in with me so you can get your NFT. We got supporter NFTs oh, here as well. We got supporter NFT right here. So G-Man, I owe you a shiny NFT. And a couple other guys. Niaz got his. What's up, Niaz? My other supporter. And we got Fat Boy uh, Australia. That's his name, Fat Boy Australia. So Fat Boy, you need one of these supporter NFTs. G-Man, you need one of these. So guys, plug me up or plug in with me, and that way I can get you your NFTs. Drop your ETH address below if you're watching this. I'll send it to you after the stream. These are uh, only 1,000 of these guys for my first supporters. And I've got some other tiers too for like 12-month uh, members. Uh, obviously no one's a 12-month member yet. Two years, VIPs, things like that. So you want some cool NFTs, I'm never going to put a dollar figure on it. It's up to you guys to sell it if you want to. You have to earn it if you're going to earn it from me. Moving forward, let's go ahead and take a look at what we came here for. We're going to be using simple... Let me move myself to the corner now. We're going to be using simple market structure to read the markets. Now, just because you know how to look at simple market structure does not mean you're gonna be able to trade every single outbreak profitably. We're gonna talk about some simple market structure breaks, how to trade a couple common candlesticks. Let me get my candlestick chart loaded up here, guys. I took a, uh, I saved it to my favorites because I'm gonna be referencing um, candlestick charts. So we're gonna be looking at a couple of them here. So as we can see, uh, I don't have this ready to put on screen, my fellows. I'm so sorry. But mo some of the most common candlestick patterns that we're going to talk about today are head and shoulders. We're going to talk about, you know, of course, inverse head and shoulders as well. A wedge. We're going to look at, we're going to try and find some examples of uh, bullish pennants. But I have a very clean bearish pennant that we're going to be able to take a look at. And I don't want to just kind of cherry pick trades. But what we're doing is trying to show you how to speculate on some of these outbreaks and occurrences. So those are the two that are most commonly used and traded, as well as channels. Now, you can get into all kinds of different candlestick patterns. Um, I don't know. Uh, three three river bottom, I don't know, three black crows. Whatever. There's so many different kinds of candlestick formations you can learn about. And I'm not going to lie. When you do see them in the wild, uh, they can be helpful. But you have to look at all of the information the market is presenting you not just any one singular candlestick pattern. So before we get any further into that, let me go through the comments here and see what we got. So we'll make sure, yep, sounds good, sounds okay, all good. G-Man says, none, not selling a given BTC away. Very good for you, G-Man, hell yeah, keep your BTC. 
Niaz says, what's up from Pakistan? What's up, Niaz? How you doing, brother? Oh, I can scroll down on these here. Let me see. Niaz says he's fine, and thanks, sir. You're welcome, brother. Thank you as well, man. It really means a lot to me for being you being a supporter of mine. You have no idea how cool it is, uh, how much it's going to help me in the long run, and how much it's going to enable me to give back to you guys. So thanks, Niaz, for being a supporter. And G-Man, and Fatboy Australia, and Andrew Groom. Thank you guys for being my, my only supporter so far. So... Moving forward now, the first pattern that I want to talk to you guys about is a wedge. So we're going to be taking a look at, let me go to, uh, let me just clean this up a little bit here, guys. So I want to get some of this out of the way for you. Let me just turn that off here. Actually, hold on. Let me come over to my object tree and I'll just, I'll just hide all of this. My tree scratch there. Okay. So I'm just leaving my object tree up, that way I can get to things in a very simplistic nature. So guys, whenever we are charting market structure, the very first thing we're going to want to do, now you can start on whatever time frame you'd like. If you'd like to start on a weekly or monthly time frame, that is acceptable. If you want to start on a one hour time frame and work your way up, I'm telling you right now that's the wrong way to do it. Uh, there's not a lot of right or wrong ways to do things in crypto, everything is kind of discretionary. But if you are using multiple time frame analysis, it is not appropriate to start on a smaller time frame and look into a larger time frame after you've already observed a smaller time frame. You're going to have a biased opinion for one. You're going to see something on the smaller time frame that you want to come to life on a larger time frame. So it's going to force your train of thought into uh, trying to see the perspective of your smaller time frame observation. But if you're looking at the larger picture, you can very obviously see new all-time highs, uh, new breaks in market structure, new lows, horizontal support and resistance. What are all these things, right? Okay, so we're gonna talk about these things right now, today, guys. And for some of you, this might be a little introductory level. And for some of you, this is just exactly what you need to get started. So we are gonna have a little bit of advanced stuff on the channel, a little bit of introductory stuff on the channel. So. <laughs> pick your live stream that you'd like to join if you don't have an abundance of time like myself I know I don't like wasting time so guys I'm sorry if you feel like this is a waste of time for you please tune in in the future if this is too elementary for you as we will be covering more uh, in, uh, more how do you say what's the word I'm looking for more advanced techniques there we go okay so if we're looking at the daily market structure here Bybit doesn't go back to previous all-time high, but I'm not going to leave from my Bybit chart for this presentation. So first thing we can take note of is where price is chilling right here right now, we have uh, support. There's some horizontal support. Hey, what's up, guys? Looks like Caesar just joined and Tong Ivan said, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, brother. We're here now. So the first thing we're looking at, fellas, is uh, we're going to identify horizontal support and resistance. These are areas that price has failed if it's a support line price has failed to break below that support line a number of times and so we're using it as support which means that buyers think it's a relatively cheap price for the asset and are willing to buy it at that price so when someone is showing support it means they are contributing to stop the asset from falling under that price right and speculators will trade the break of a horizontal support or resistance line Okay, so now that we have established a horizontal support line here, and we can indicate this by a trend line. I'm just going to draw a very simple trend line. You can use zones. So a zone would be something like this. We're going to the same level here, and we're going to try and touch some of these lows here, some of these lows right here. So this would be a zone. We can even extend the zone up to here right because that's a low in that zone so we can see this is a support zone which is what you're commonly going to find when you're looking for horizontal support and resistance zones you will commonly find zones and not a fine price point like for example if I try to put this resistance here it's not going to be the same let me make that a solid line it's not going to be the same as if uh, as this one that I have down here right because price finally touches this line multiple times very finely touched so we can represent it by a line now here we cannot represent this value by a line because once we spill over to this line there's still a range on the top side of it so this must be classified as a zone this right here must be classified as a zone right and you're wondering well Dylan where are the wedges where where are the uh, 
<laughs> Dylan's my first name, guys. I, I go by Edward. So, Edward, where are the wedges? Where, where are the uh, dynamic support and resistance lines? Where is everything? So, guys, we have to identify those values. So, we have identified on a daily time frame support and resistance levels. Now, we can drop down into multiple time frames and do this all over again. We can repeat this process for every time frame to try and find valid areas of support and resistance. As we can see here, just off the top of my head, I can see that this was potentially a resistance point as price failed to break above here, flipped above on this side, attempted a support touch, and then broke below, used it again. So in the future, I know that when price comes back up here, this is going to be a strong area of resistance, right? We're not at that price point now, and this line is not as valid as this zone or as this line. Why? Because we have prices, uh, price action above that line. So that is an intraday horizontal support and resistance line. These are solid daily, and if you even look on the weekly time frame, like I said, you need to start on the largest time frame you want to observe. I'm not starting on the weekly time frame because I don't want to waste that much time. It is important to understand what the asset you want to invest in or trade is doing on a weekly time frame as well. I am skipping the weekly time frame because just because of time. I would highly suggest that you start on the weekly or even the monthly if you want. I personally don't use monthly too often, but again, skipping that just because of time and I will break down into smaller time frames in a moment to show you what I mean by some of these patterns. Okay, so first thing we're going to take note of now I am going to uh, I'll leave that there so that we know it's an intermediate zone so now what we are doing is if we are in a, a point of uptrend if we are in this point right here let's just backtrack all our data and we don't have any of this other stuff yet this is all that we've seen we're just going to imagine so how can we identify dynamic support and resistance what is dynamic support and resistance okay horizontal support and resistance straight across your horizon right from left to right, right to left if you're in China. Some places read right to left, that's weird. But if you are looking for a dynamic, what does dynamic mean? It means it goes along with the trend, likely to change, and is moving with the trend, right? Horizontal support and resistance are stagnant. They often don't move. They're defined as we just saw by price ranging high and low. Now what we have here is dynamic support so what we're going to try and do here is connect the lows the low point at any point in time if we are doing this if we are trying to use any point in the market this is how we can identify if it is in an uptrend or a consolidation let us look here for a moment we have uptrend we have downtrend right downtrend lower highs being formed accompanied by lower lows right uptrend higher lows being formed accompanied by higher highs so when this breaks it is no longer in an uptrend this is a consolidation price is struggling to make higher highs and price is also struggling to make lower lows here's a low point price isn't touching it here's a high point price isn't touching it until it breaks out and then in that case we can look again for our uptrends by connecting the low points so here we have dynamic support line this could potentially be used in the future as support here we have another dynamic trend line it's only got two touches it's not as strong we're just going to leave that one blank here we have a dynamic support line one two and these are strong these are in periods of very strong upwards movement so naturally if we are looking to if we see something where is the path? I'll just use the arrow because right here. So if we see a break below this structure and it falls down in here and creates a lower low than the previous low, that's a break in market structure. And in the meantime, I think the path is right here. There we go. That is a break in market structure. So if market structure is broken, comes up and creates a lower high, this high is not as high as this high, right? So if it creates a lower high, then continues to go down and create a lower low. This is a change in market structure and indicative of a downtrend, at which point we'll be able to put a dynamic downtrend line and potentially a dynamic uh, support line as well on the bottom. So let me just back all that up now, and we're going to zoom out to where we have price action here. Uh, we'll connect those points, and these are pretty sloppy lines. I'm just trying to make you understand the basic concept of uptrends and downtrends, right? 
higher high, lower low. The next high that's created, this is a higher high than the previous swing high. This is a swing low, and it is higher than the previous swing low created. So what is interesting about this here? What is interesting about this here is price is coming into a wedge. And if we could see that price is wedging here, let me just fix that a little bit, guys. Now that actually kind of looks like a parallel channel, but if we are to connect these two here, then we can start to see something of the wedge. And that's kind of why I have this other chart here. It looks uh, like boo-boo. Let me see. Yeah, that's my Binance chart because I do a lot of daily tracking on there, see what lines are going to be respected and disrespected. It's very easy to end up with a chart like this. Now, to clean it up along the way means to delete some or group some as I have my object tree here so you can see I have a bunch of stuff group and I can see all of that crap in a moment's notice if I wanted to uh, but you know then you have your chart looking like crap and sometimes it's really hard unless you drew the lines it's hard to see what's going on so now that we have uh, we can observe and see we'll just play it very quickly let me go for a back uh, backtrack here so interestingly enough we drew this dynamic support line and price uh, attempted to find support here but what happened when it broke down below, right? Everyone's getting ready to short. Here we have a huge piercing candle. We have a lower high. Have a lower high here. So price is now going to be using this. This is going to be active. This is going to be breached, right? Now this is no longer finding support on this dynamic trend line. It's no longer active now it can still be valid price could come up and use it again in the future but this is no longer active we are using a new active dynamic trend line represented by a lower high speculators can speculate on this simply by seeing one lower high now you would like to get a third touch on it to confirm it to trade it more reliably and with more confidence but you can see price is broken down off this uptrend and is starting to form a downtrend now let us look at potential areas of support and resistance. So we can see here, this was a resistance level. And it's not perfect, that could be a zone. So we'll go ahead and make it a zone. Just make that a zone there. So we can see here, there's a support level indicated here and a resistance level indicated here. Price failed to break a new high, came down, came up, potential support. So now people are going to try and play this range. We have a wedge identified. Do you see the wedge? right it's not a perfect wedge uh, like one that we'll talk about here in a moment but we can see that price is now entering a wedge so what can we expect when we see something like this we can expect a reaction along this point or along this point if this support gets broken it's likely we're going to go down into the next support zone now it's not it may not happen immediately but when you are playing a range of these prices you have to understand what is active and valid and what isn't where are your ranges so this if it gets rejected from here would support a range that we're going back down now i can go ahead and hide this for a moment because you know like i said we wouldn't really have that we would have this high point here we would absolutely have that high point there and that is now resistance that is all-time high strong resistance so if price breaks above this at any point we can expect resistance at this level and if price breaks below this point or it gets respected here we can expect some type of support here until ultimately it breaks over this or crashes down into the next layer so this gives you a map a road map of potential possibilities what the asset you're looking at might be doing so if we just speed that up a little bit and see how price reacted it shot through that zone found a huge wick in that zone at previous support and remember this wasn't that strong at the time uh, we had really only had perhaps this and lo and behold it was very clean so now we see the price is trading within this wedge and we can see right here let me just back it up a little bit more what is this again right so we have an active structure here now price is technically consolidating in this rain but here we can see what is that another wedge what is this if we connect our lows right by these two points that would have been broken and if we connect our lows to the new low here we have 
another wedge. This is a bearish formation. So we see fake out on the breakout, did not come all the way down, shot through that resistance. Another fake out, right? Comes back down. So now we have range because this is not a wedge. This is sloping up. So we can't use that and call it a wedge anymore. The wedge is broken and we're looking for new price action. Although price is trending along this area of the wedge here. We'll wait to see. It hits support. Comes back up. Gets resistance from two areas of resistance, right? This was potential support resistance zone. Flipped. Uh, this was potential support zone. Flipped into resistance. Now it's potential resistance zone. As we can see, price is struggling on this breakout. And then makes that move to the upside. So look at how price is behaving now as we can move up and see okay just back it up a little bit now this is a breakout price has attempted to break out of this downtrend here as we can see there is an uptrend and this is sort of a wedge if we're connecting we're just simply connecting high points and low points that's all we're doing here we're connecting high points and low points Highs to highs, lows to lows. This is how you're going to get dynamic structure. Guys, I'll check the comments in just a moment. If you have questions, I will check them out in just a moment. I don't want to lose my train of thought. So we didn't know that resistance point was there uh, while we were speculating on this. So let me just back it up again. We didn't know that resistance point was there. We see price has fallen out of the wedge. So naturally, we're going to try and short, uh, or we're going to try and bet on the downside. That price comes back to this support level as it did maybe even breaks through to the downside, right? So as we can see here, that's actually not what happened for BTC. It didn't go all the way back down to this support region. It stopped right here in this support region. Price uh, did find support. Now, this is no longer, right? This is no longer uh, active. We're not using it as resistance. There's no way that we can use this at resistance at this point in time. Now it's possible price could travel into the future uh, along these lines we'll see in just a moment and potentially use this as resistance in the future right so now what we have here um, before we speculated on this breakout backing up just a little bit more we have a higher high we have a higher high so we are connecting this data here telling us that we have a higher high oops could not unclick on that so we have this data here telling us this is a higher high and now we have a new range. We have a new wedge to trade. So we can see, again, here we have uh, the wedge. We have the classic wedge here. And then we have the larger wedge here. So let's just see how price moves for a bit. And then it breaks out. Then it comes to that resistance point. And here everyone's like, oh, new all time high, new this and that, new this and that. Okay, so now we have a new swing low. We have a new swing low. So we're not going to discount any information. We have a new swing low, and this is the potential where if this uptrend line is broken, we need to start looking for short positions. While this uptrend line is valid, we can play into this resistance. So longing from here into this resistance is not a bad idea. Breaking over a previous all-time high is this very, very sketchy area to be trading in, especially when you start to get outside of ranges. So remember when we started on this chart, didn't have any of this. And as time goes by and our ideas or we look at the TA on the chart and we see what is happening, what is occurring, we can have new ideas about new ranges and make new trades. Obviously, all the information from back here isn't gonna do us any good right here, but as it develops, we'll see prices approaching this point right here, this point right here. And we'll talk about how people speculate on this. How do people speculate on something of this, right? So this is, in itself, a wedge. This is a wedge. So there are a couple ways to trade something like this. Now, if you see this here, we don't have a third touch along this line. Let me try and pull up a photo example real quick of a downtrend I was trading. Okay, so talking about a downtrend, when we have a downtrend right here, right, or um, any kind of trend, any kind of channel that has multiple touches, here we can see touches along the top, touches along the bottom right if it doesn't break through on the bottom this means it is likely to be used as support in the future so right people are countered and this is a counter trend trade that you're looking at right here uh, no, 
what you will want to look for naturally is to try and short the top, long the bottom. Once it breaks, long the breakout, right? So this type of setup right here, I was trying to trade the breakout. So instead of setting the risk to reward ratio here and having to play all the downtrend channel as my stop out, because I actually got stopped out in one trade before this, trying to play this part right here. Um, so we could see here that if price does come to this level and begins to break out, I've got the best entry. I've got the best entry right there. Now, a little bit later speculation is trying to br uh, trade the long breakout here, but naturally, again, we can short from that point. And here is how that turned out for me. Just a few candlesticks after that, we hit TP. Price did end up breaking out. I was trying to trade that, uh, chase that breakout, and it happened for us. So now, naturally, if someone's gonna try and long this, right, we have speculators here saying, okay, well, it's touched two times. If it gets a third touch, I can long somewhere back to, you know, previous resistance. Uh, maybe even keep going up to all-time high. Now, where you would place your stop loss is based on a couple things. In this market structure, uh, we could see short-term support resistance flip right here, right? So desired entry for a long will probably be somewhere around this point. And if it goes much further below that, uh, we don't have a lot of market structure to tell us to get out of the trade. Normally, I would like to try and find an area of previous dynamic support or resistance or horizontal support or resistance to make that stop loss make sense or swing low. In all of these cases, uh, that's a pretty upsetting risk to reward ratio, but that nonetheless, that is how somebody is going to speculate on it. So they see this opportunity to long, they set up their long here, make sure that they can afford their stop loss and if price goes below their stop loss, they're out of that position looking for the next trade. Now, another way someone's gonna speculate on this same market structure, this exact same idea, someone's gonna try and take a short here. And we can try and put the stop loss above this swing high and above this swing high because that, that would kind of make sense. 15% stop loss is great. That is pretty extreme. Uh, you would have been able to potentially grab a better trade if we were looking at this. Some of you are probably saying, why didn't he draw that trend line? Well, you guys are right. I should draw this trend line. So here we see another wedge. But if, you didn't, if you're not connecting all your high points, all your highs to highs and all your lows to lows, right? And if you don't get something that looks like this, uh, you're just gonna flat out miss some shit. You are going to miss some things and some simple market structures that someone else has drawn, right? Because just a second ago, we did not see this line because I did not draw it. I go back to the object tree. We did not draw it. So what did it look like? It looked like we had a lot of room to play for a loan. But if we simply draw that trend line, now we can see price is gonna be um, potentially respecting somewhere along here. So someone's gonna try and short this breakout and it actually broke down from this horizontal support range as well. So this was not confirmed horizontal support or resistance as we saw down here, multiple touches. This was a previous resistance point that price struggled to break above and then shot through, had a reaction, and we are using it now as potential, dynam uh, potential horizontal support and resistance, and that is how somebody traded that. So looking forward into a little bit higher of market structure now, we can see that a new, once again, a new high has been created. So we broke over this downtrend. Here we have a new high. And some people, even me, myself, I had this drawn here. Because we were forming new highs and new lows, we were two touches here. So this wasn't confirmed by any means. Uh, but that was speculative. Now, what's very interesting is we can see a bear flag. Got a lot of stuff here. So let me try and hide some of it that doesn't resemble the bear flag pretty much all this stuff down. So we're done looking at the previous market structure uh, and we are aware of how to give ourselves ranges now. So let me hide that, that, all this stuff over here guys. I'm just gonna hide all this stuff really quick. I'll probably, I'm more than likely gonna delete it after the stream uh, because this was just for lesson's sake. But here, what do we have guys? One of my favorite and the mo probably one of the most easiest uh, patterns to trade is a this is a bear flag now what you would call a pennant uh, is something like what we have right here we'll get into that in just a second so there's a small difference in pennant and flags uh, flag you know could have a rectangular shape uh, rectangular shape like this let me get that out of the way guys uh, flag can have a rectangular shape like this and a pennant is more so often like this where it makes the triangular shape so pennant commonly refers to a triangular shape. This is not a, a pennant here, this is a flag. So this is a bearish flag. This is a bearish flagpole. So here we can see the staff or the flag rod. We can see three touches from here. 
So naturally, guys, when we had two touches here, what happened? What is a speculator going to do based off this? Because we could see that formation, right? So a speculator could choose to short from here, right? Or a speculator could choose to wait for the bottom and try to long along the bottom, right? Using some of these swing lows here, that swing low is a stop loss, or maybe this swing low is a stop loss right here. Now, not that either of these ideas are wrong. Those are both valid ideas based on the market structure that we have. Right, this is an uptrend and it's attempting to break out of a downtrend, right? So we have an uptrend outbreak attempt coming along a downtrend. So we could see where our price is wedged. Now, speculators are going to choose to speculate from this line. They could place their short here. Once it was rejected, they could place their short here, maybe above like that. They can bring it down here. There are a lot of different ways to speculate on a position. So let me just close these out now. But the overlying larger structure that we have on the daily time frame is a bear flag. And what happens when price breaks out of that bear flag? Well, let me just see. Let me see if I could find that for us really quick as well. I'm not going to spend a bunch of time looking for it. No, don't have it on standby. Okay. So don't have that on standby, but a bear flag normally breaks down and when everyone saw this bear flag here, as it starts to unfold, we could see, okay, many, many, many people are trying to long from here. But what just so happened was that people saw the bear flag and the huge spillout was coming now. Where could we see potential take profit targets to on a short, right? If we're looking to short, we can TP here. Let me just change this to uh, green. So if we're looking to short, we can TP1 here from that outbreak, TP2 here, and TP3 down here shorting from here or if we were longing from here like i said we would use this as a stop loss or use that as a stop loss but what happened the market chased down into that area and look at where we are now look at where we are now so this has previously been used as resistance price broke above and remember earlier i had this one over here and saying it could be used in the future now this is being used it, price is trying to find support above this line and price is trying to find support above this line. Now, if I go out and hide these, uh, let me just hide all this crap now. So what do we have? I'll go. Even, I'll even hide the, um, this and this. So what do we have here now, okay? On the daily time frame, you can see this structure with your eyes, uh, but it might make a little bit more sense on the four hour time frame, right? So when we have an idea about the larger time frame, it gives us the opportunity to drop into a smaller time frame and make decisions. So let me turn on uh, some of these lines again really quick. A bunch of this mumbo jumbo, right? So if I know all of this is happening, I don't have to sit here and take trades on the daily time frame. I can break down into the smaller time frame now, let's just say four hour for example, and we can make do the exact same thing that we were just doing. We can do it again here on the four hour time frame. We have a range. We know this is a four hour trading range. We have another one here. We know this is a four hour trading range. So we can start to play all of these key areas of support and resistance on any time frame. And if you get into a much smaller time frame, you're gonna be able to see with very clear vision what is occurring. So let me just, uh, again, I'm gonna hide everything here again and just redraw what I got here. So now we see a bear flag or a bearish pennant, right? another flagpole we have simple market structure here telling us wow okay price is being uh, rejected off of this dynamic trend line price has been rejected three times this is the third rejection from here so we could likely uh, short this in the future based upon further rejections now any moment it breaks up and over or any time it approaches this line it could break up and over but the chances of you being successful if you're taking shorts off of this downtrend line is much higher than in your, success, uh, your chances of being successful at taking a long based off of it. Only the time it breaks will your idea be invalid. If you're shorting it every time it bumps up against it, there's going to be that time like in that channel I just showed you where I was trying to find the bottom of it. I thought the channel was too extended, so I was counter trend trading the long trying to get out of that channel. So what we can notice here is there was a breach here and we can even put it here. And I had this drawn out as a rising wedge. 
Yo, let me just hide that for a sec. We can see there was a rising wedge. Price fell out. And for me, that was confirmation of the uh, price falling out of the wedge. Now, to make sure I'm not forgetting anything or skipping over anything, I'm going to connect the new low points. And before we had this candlestick right here, uh, we had a formation like this. Right? So let me just see if I have that available. Okay, not readily available. But anyway, we have this structure right here, right? Price is seemingly breaking out of this. Now, it could come down to the downside here like this, do some type of fugazi movement, break above, and come up right here, right? Because what is this telling us? We actually do have uh, higher lows. Here, we're running into lower highs, which gives us the wedge. Guys, if price was making higher highs here, then the slope of this line would be up. If we're connecting high points, the slope of the line is going to be up, and that would give us an uptrend. Since we're connecting, all we're doing is drawing a line to connect these high points. And since we're connecting the high points, and because it is going downward, that means there is a downtrend momentum. Here we're connecting the low points, and we're seeing an upward sloping trend. It means there's an uptrend momentum, and it can't continue in both directions. It cannot be an uptrend and a downtrend at the same time either an uptrend, a downtrend, or consolidation. Those are the only three phases of the market. If there's a fourth market phase that exists, introduce me to it now. <laughs> the market's either in an uptrend, in which case you should look for longs, the market's in a downtrend, in which case you should look for shorts, or the market is consolidating, meaning price is struggling to break new highs and price is struggling to break new lows, right? So here we can see that while we are seeing a series of lower highs and a series of higher lows, ultimately this is a consolidation because we are not breaking out, right? If I tried to connect that, if I tried to draw this line here anywhere, anywhere it's going to come down and be pierced because that's not a consolidation. Here we can see it's consolidating between these ranges. So now that we are aware of how to draw uh, dynamic support and resistance and basic horizontal support and resistance, and again, this is not confirmed support and resistance, and this is not confirmed support and resistance, but this is the previous swing high up to here. So if we're looking at this, if we're looking at an out, let me get rid of that now. If we're looking at an outbreak of this wedge, a couple of ways to trade this would be, here would be a short take profit target, and here would be a long take profit target. Now we were just talking about this in the Discord channel. so. There are a couple ways to speculate on this, and of course, if you hadn't seen any of this information, right? If we were here now, let me back up just a little bit more. So if we're here now, and we're seeing, I'll discount that wick as to make this one a little bit cleaner. So if we're seeing this, we can choose to, there are a couple ways we can trade this. We can go long from here, expecting a breakout to the upside and reducing our stop loss maybe below this point right here or below that swing low something of that nature and we're expecting price to break out that is going to give us the best entry if we are correct in our speculation right now if we waited for price to come and do this movement and we've already seen what happened so it's a little unfair but if we wait for price to come down here and go like this give us a confirmation outside and then go up Look at how our risk to reward ratio is affected. If we're trying to find a profitable or a logical stop loss, we'd have to go to that swing low or probably even keep it right here, which is going to severely upset the risk to reward ratio. Now, if you're waiting on that confirmation, you could probably say that if price re-enters the wedge, you want to get out and that will make the risk to reward ratio a little bit better. But as you can see, if price does break out in the, in the favor of your idea, you get a delayed entry and not as much profits as if you had taken this long. Now on the flip side, if we're trying to speculate short, we're going to try and measure our shorts up against this point, right? So if price comes right here and gets uh, rejected, this is going to be the best entry for our short. And we can take profit one here, you know, take profit two, three, all that stuff. And our stop loss could be just above this swing high. Whereas if price creates another new high, could potentially be into this area somewhere. Right? Price could run into resistance right here, in which case we don't want to we don't want to hang on to a short position for that long because price could probably invalidate our idea. Now if we're trying to find if we're trying to look at this on uh, or be a little bit more conservative in this, we can wait for again, we can wait for the outbreak 
and a retest confirmation before entering, which would put us on the flip side of a scenario, maybe something like this. Now, lastly, the, one of the final ways to trade this, I, I would say the last, last way to trade a wedge breakout is trying to speculate on the fallout immediately as it falls out. So again, now we're speculating here. If this doesn't get hold, a lot of people are longing this, remember? They have this trade set up, but in a long. Now, if you're expecting price to break here finally, that's where you want to be involved in your short until you can chase your short down. Now, again, we didn't know that line was there. So let me just go ahead and move this forward a little bit more now. And we can see, uh, I'll just back it up to right here. So why did we have this candle here? Well, we had a couple of people betting on this. So we saw a price bump in there. And then we had this bullish candle. So people are trying to pump here. And what happens? Shorters see the short opportunity. So now shorters start trying to stack up their shorts right here because they want to get the best entry if it breaks on the downside, which it could break up to the upside and they get wrecked very quickly. But as we can see here, that is why that is more than likely why we had that huge impulsive movement after a seemingly uptrend reversal because shorters started speculating off that. Now we have a wedge break. So there's a little bit of slow in the market and people are going to wait. Okay, we're going to get this confirmation here on the outside of this channel, just like we did this one, right? Because remember when we had this trend line here uh, like that, you know, that, that's not perfect, uh, but it broke out and had the retest. So now there's going to be a potential retest. People are going to look for their shorts and people are going to try and target that as their short TP or people are going to, uh, some people who are trying to long this, some people who are trying to long this here, betting that price is going to break this wedge up, probably use a stop loss like that. Uh, so there may be some like liquidity check or you know, people with a lot of money trying to cover their short and DCA right here. But ultimately, if that snaps, right, where do you think it's gonna go? More than likely to the downside and for what reason? Because there's nothing here stopping it. There's no other support or resistance here. And that is the previous swing low. So price could very well range into this area, possibly all the way down here. Maybe even break that if this consolidation is broken and the downtrend continuation resumes. So I know that was a lot. Let me, I saw a bunch of comments coming up, guys. So let me go check and see what the comments were saying. Uh, first, let me grab a drink of water and then I'm gonna come check on the comments, guys. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have too many comments. Uh, Niaz says, in price action trading, we don't have to use any other indicator. Well, Niaz, uh, you can use indicators as confirmations. Uh, but the purpose of today's instructional, we're not exactly using indicators as confirmations. I will go over that in a future video. And I do already have existing YouTube videos about that. But uh, for today's purpose, and for, gen and for trading in general, what you should be doing is, okay, I'm not going to say what you should be doing because... Uh, like I said earlier, there's not really a right or a wrong way. Sometimes you can be wrong. But what you should be doing is trying to formulate your opinion on the market first. So if I'm looking at this here and I say, well, this is a downtrend and this is a bear flag. So I want to try and short that breakout. Then I can try to add an indicator like, uh, let me see, something, uh, just my favorites. Let's just go ahead and add my favorites on here. I'm not going to use EMA Cross. That is one of my favorites, but I'm not going to use it right now. Where is the... I'm blind. Okay. If it was a snake, it would have got me. So, here. ADX. Low. Uh, low momentum. So, we could see the uptrend or the downtrend gained strength. And then the downtrend kind of lost strength. Now the trend's ready to be taken. There's no trend established here. This doesn't really help me confirm or deny my idea. The RSI is not exactly oversold. If the RSI was up here or overbought, if the RSI was up here, I'd be like, "Oh yeah, hell yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna short, right?" Because RSI is overbought means price is likely to go down. If the uh, RSI was way down here, and I'm like, "Well, people think this is actually considered cheap for this price right now. Maybe I shouldn't short it because since people think it's cheap, they're probably gonna try and buy it, and maybe the wedge breaks up." Uh, but here on the MACD, I can see, "Oh yeah, we've just crossed bearish." I mean, the MACD. It really is designed for uh, to identify breaks in consolidations. So the MACD, I mean, obviously, if you're in a, if you're in a strong uptrend or a strong downtrend, I mean, the MACD could have these moments like 
uh, where it shows, you know, on the flip side, we know this is a downtrend based on the daily time frame. And same thing for right here. We were looking at this earlier, and this was a strong uptrend. But here, sometimes the MACD will say, hey, look, this is possibly a downtrend, right? And that's because it's peaked out, and then the MACD flips. So that the MAC, looking at the MACD and the market structure might make you think that price is going to come all the way down here. So that's why I like to form my ideas and opinions based on market structure and then use the indicators as confirmation. So those are my favorite indicators, uh, but I'm not going to go too much into indicators as confirmations in this video, Niaz. I definitely did want to answer your question. Uh, so it is very possible to trade just market structure. I know plenty of people who just trade market structure and never use indicators and they make a bunch of money doing it. So you can be wrong trading market structure uh, and using indicators can be helpful to uh, prove or deny your idea, confirm or deny your idea, but it's not necessary. Many, 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 many traders just use market structure because it's very, very obvious to see and it's something that everybody reacts to. There's, there is almost always a price reaction along um, dynamic support or resistance line or horizontal support or resistance line because many people see it. So that is why. Um, Bortomello says, my learning cap is on. Let's go. Hope you're learning something, brother. G-Man says, message retracted. <laughs> G-Man says, can go up, can go down. Sideways consolidation. The other way is wrecked. <laughs> yeah, my, my, fire today's live stream. Niaz says, please, sir, explain how to avoid false breakout. Niaz, bro, there's just absolutely no, I'm glad you asked that. There is just absolutely no way to avoid that. So all of us, every single body that is looking at the market and BTC today who wants to trade is looking at this wedge right now and they're saying, hey, if this support floor is broken, if this wedge is broken, okay, so this wedge is already broken. If we find support here, it may go back to the top of this wedge because now we're playing a different wedge. This is a different market structure we're playing. This potentially broken. So we need uh, that retest there. There's just no way to know if it's going to be false or not. That's why... Uh, G-Man has often said that I'm an aggressive trader because normally I'm looking at smaller time frames and when something like that market structure is broken usually spills to the other side very quickly without little time for confirmation. So there's just no way to accurately predict if it's going to break up or down. You need to look at all the clues from the market. The, the daily picture, bigger structure, the daily uh, RSI, you know, if, if you want to see, is this asset considered cheap right now or is it considered expensive? So <laughs> to put it simply, there's no way to stop yourself from being involved in a false breakout if you are speculating on it before it breaks. Now, like I said, if you wait for it to break, you can uh, buy or sell the confirmation. So if it rebreaks on the outside here, you can short that comfortably knowing that if price re-enters the wedge, it's, it's a fake out and going to the other side and there's your stop loss going to be hit. Uh, same thing if it breaks to the upside, wait for the outbreak and confirmation. So price comes out here and then comes like this and then comes down and then comes down, that's our confirmation. If price were to come back up here, break out, come right here, then shoot up, this could be our confirmation. Many other people will wait for this market structure to be broken. Oftentimes you'll see when a market structure is being broken that price will just soar into the next range. So this could be, this could be right here uh, how you would trade that with more confidence as opposed to trying to trade this. But like I said, if this is correct, that's going to be your better entry. Uh, and if, if, if you're incorrect, you're going to get stopped out pretty quickly and you'll figure it out pretty quickly if you were wrong or not. So Niaz, I'm sorry brother, I wish I had a crystal ball, but I don't, I can't see the future, so it's really hard to know if you're buying a fake out or a breakout. Really, really hard, especially on smaller time frames. When you get into the one minute, three minute, five minute time frames, you'll see that shit all the time. All the time. False breakouts, which are called fake outs. But as you expose yourself to these situations, you understand how you like to gamble against them. And that's why, that's really why this is one of my favorite market structures because even if I'm right or if I'm wrong, this gives me a clear opportunity to spectate or speculate. <laughs> uh, I can, I, I have very clear ranges as to where the price is going to go if it breaks to the upside or downside. So that's why it's one of my favorite structures to trade. Um, Janny says, naked trading. 
Danny says, let's play Edward in Luna to sh No, 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 no! I do not, I will not accept Luna tokens. Bro, that's crazy too. We were looking at, uh, I mean, it's on live stream here. Someone recommended Luna like two times in a row. We had a short idea, but me, I'm a, I'm a what we call a minute degenerate. Someone who likes to trade small time frames such as the one, five, three minute, uh, known as minute degenerates. So I can't, I can't really formulate, uh, I don't try to speculate long term on many assets except Bitcoin uh, for that reason. I mean, anything can just go to absolute zero as Luna did. Now, we were speculating short on that. We'd have a really big fat payday, but uh, that's not, that wasn't the case. We didn't get the payday. I'm glad somebody did. Uh, but no, Jenny, no thanks. I don't want Luna for to shave my mustache. <laughs> Johnny says, do you use Divergence also? Johnny, uh, yes, sir. I love, 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 love trading on Divergence. Absolutely love taking a guess on it. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much, you know, though that's a signal to me that goes one of two ways. The Divergence is true and I'm profitable, or it's not true and I have a calculated stop loss. I mean, it's that simple. So that's, that's why I love Divergence trading, because it's one way or the other. That's why I love breakout trading, because it's one way or the other. I mean, I guess in any market, it's either going to go up or it's going to go down. But when you are trying to trade an uptrend, a stop loss is hard to identify unless it's like easily at the end of an uptrend parallel channel. Same thing for a downtrend. It's hard to identify a reasonable stop loss in some of those areas um, because you don't really have much information. Like if you're just using swing lows or something else, then you could be finding yourself with way with a hefty stop loss, a uh, stop loss that doesn't even make sense. Now, sometimes if you're gambling on the larger structure, that's necessary. Uh, let me just see. For example, I think I do have a trade taken. Let me see where is that son of a gun? Yeah. So here is a, and this is still active. So let me extend that over now. So here is an actual trade that I took. Some of them I'll like to delete. Which one is this? Okay, so active, duh. The one that says active. Okay, so I can see that this is still active and this was a gross, this was a gross stop loss. Why? I put it just over this and I was speculating on a different market structure. Like I said, I was speculating on this. <laughs> so that's why I jumped my entry right there where I did. I wanted to try and long this and I knew I didn't, I should not have a tight stop loss here or here because that could probably invalidate my trade uh, as I did see this line, this top line, when I placed that. So as time has moved forward, I've continued to do my analysis and I'm like, hey, you know what, this position, this is a valid position. I'm gonna wait to see how this is uh, treated now because at the time, I did not have this. When I created this trade, I did not have this information. This is all the information I had when I created the trade. Let me play it forward a little bit more, right there. So as soon as that was broken, I entered because I'm an aggressive trader. Uh, and I wanted to make sure I captured the fallout of the price movement. And then as you'll see, price you know comes this way and then it battles that again. And then so now it's battling this and created that there. So now here we are. So that's why my trade is still active because I'm still playing the same structure. It's just unfolded a little bit differently and I'm waiting to see, okay, you know what? If price breaks above this high right here, Mark is probably gonna go in that direction. I don't wanna be involved in a short any longer. And here is just TP1. Price comes down to this side, it's gonna give me a good profitable movement. If this gets broken, price could very well range into, I don't know, 24K, 20K, 17K. So I want to be in that short position when it occurs. I want those profits. And for me to just close that trade and try to take another entry, I, I think because of where I already entered, uh, is pointless. There's no reason for me to do that. I could, I could be scalping here. I've literally watched this trade go up. 3% uh, profitability minus 2% profitability. It's been swinging around here and I'm just waiting for this. Cons this range is consolidated and I'm waiting for it to break out to the downside. So like I said, I was willing to bet on that in the event I was right and I've properly managed this trade based on market structure. Now, uh, in the Discord, I did say that if you wanted to set your stop loss above entry, there was nothing wrong with that, right? Because this trade made profits and so to move a stop loss above entry would have made sense. You could have recalculated another entry. But I wanted to leave mine active until it either hit that stop loss or take profit based upon what I thought of the market. 
Uh, so, Johnny, that was a little bit of a digression there. I forgot I was ask, answering your uh, divergence trade. So, yes, I definitely do look at other indicators, uh, especially when I'm trading. You know, RSI, MACD, ADX, EMAs. These are my favorite indicators right here to use. So if you want to pause this, take a screenshot, you can put these on. If it says buy daily crypto, my scripts are private. If you want one, just hit me up. I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, they're private because PineScript is a joke and the, Pi, uh, what do they call themselves, Pine moderators? They're all assholes. They're like, oh, we write code and we write it so much better than you and what you've already produced is already out there, so we're going to moderate it. Just because there's a whole bunch of different scripts that already exist that do the same thing. So um, if you saw something there that you want, uh, I can leave it in the comments after this um, video, but yeah, I do love divergence, Johnny. So let me just go ahead and close up that trade now. Okay, so, whoopsie daisy. Let me take a look at my notes here just for a second, guys. Okay, yeah, head and shoulders. That is another one of my favorite patterns, and we just saw that recently. So the downtrend, uptrend, downtrend channels, very great. As I showed you earlier in, in my downtrend trade, I can just pull that up again really quickly to touch on that for you one more time. So here, so here we're trading this downtrend. We're shorting from the top and we're longing from the bottom. Longing from the bottom is counter trend trading and I say don't do it because it involves a lot more risk. Obviously taking a long and a downtrend is not a good idea unless you have very, very clear, concise take profit and stop loss goals for this reason, right? So like I said, I, I really did try uh, this this movement right here before it and I got in somewhere along this point here and I put my stop loss down here and it went up for a profit and I saw a break below this point so I was like oh you know what I need to get out of this trade it's going back down to the bottom of the channel I waited for it to get to the bottom of the channel I waited to see if that candlestick was just going to shoot out of it saw it starting to pull up so I entered right then and there that new candle was formed this was a three minute time frame I was looking at new candle was formed Two seconds after a new candle was formed and I see it wasn't shooting right back down, jumped into that son of a gun. And that's how it worked out for me, right? TP1 was there, uh, price ended up coming a little bit longer and did break out of that to some degree. I didn't get everything I wanted out of it, but TP1 was hit and it did break out of that downtrend channel. So trading channels, trading wedges are my favorite ways to trade. Now we're gonna take a look at one more thing here, which is on this same chart we can see here on the exact same chart we can see a head and shoulders pattern this is actually an inverse head and shoulders pattern this is one of my favorite to trade now again we can see we get into all this kind of stuff here like what are these tools x a b c d cipher blah 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 a lot of this crap people don't even know how to use what i think is highly advantageous is if we are speculating on the same market structure right and what can people see very very simply that's going to prompt everyone to, to take action wedges everyone can see a wedge anyone with the eyeballs can see a wedge without drawing the lines if you if you've traded the markets for any amount of time and i'm not going to say if you can't see a wedge you're a bad trader but you need to pay attention to them you need to look out for them because many 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 traders retail traders uh heavy what do you call those investment corporations um hedge funds they can see wedges they can see wedges they know what comes after a wedge it's a reaction and they're trading it so something that's also very, very common to see that a lot of people are going to speculate on, which is a very common pattern, the head and shoulders pattern. G-Man called this one out in the server not too long ago. Here would be the left shoulder. Here it comes down into we form a head. And then here's the right shoulder, right? So we're breaking above and boom. So now if this were to continue, a head and shoulders pattern is a reversal pattern, right? So what we can see here is if this head and shoulders came to life, and it did come to life to some degree, we could definitely see the head and shoulders formation here, but it would have needed to come back below the base, wherever you establish the base to be, in order for it to be a confirmed reversal pattern. So usually after you see a head and shoulders, pattern reverses, if it's confirmed. So, oh, excuse me, just had some lunch and uh, had to burp. So if price breaks above this neckline here, we're going to be very cautious of it continuing its upwards trend. And at, and at that point, I was very fucking scared because uh, I was trying to short. And I think at that point when G-Man pointed out the head and shoulders, I was in a short. Uh, maybe not the one that I just showed you, but I think I was in a short. And I was really scared when G-Man showed that head and shoulders because I was like, wow, if that head and shoulders comes to life, it's going to change the trend direction. Uh, to some degree at least we could have seen it pump up to maybe here or here 
So a head and shoulders pattern, even if you miss the head and shoulders pattern, you still can watch out for it and look for that reversal that is likely to come. So here we have not seen a reversal yet and the candlesticks have come out of the end of that head and shoulders pattern. Now I'll try to find uh, another one. Like we, It's very easy to skip over them, uh, but you can find them in a lot of places. It looks like here was one, a little bit of a head and shoulders, didn't come to life. Baseline wasn't broken, so price came up. Uh, I'm just gonna drag back a little bit here and you can see if you see any of them. Uh, but here, look, 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 guys, I'm just going to point out really quickly, just because we're at this wedge here and we're, we're seeing a really huge wedge uh, doesn't mean that you can't find these things in nature all the time, right? Here's very clean uh, resistance and support, right? Very clean. If that breaks over, here's the confirmation. Boop. Now here we see again, you know, breaks down, comes back in. We can draw that. Uh, here pretty much everywhere you see guys and then it, boop here's that look boop rejection reaction boop pop goes the weasel short term support floor here breaks down reaction another inverse head and shoulders this is great here uh, boom 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 that one broke up through look at that see Broke up through where the base was established, and the trend reversed. Now, only for a small time, because it's the four-hour time frame, but the trend did reverse. So we missed the head and shoulders, right? If you saw this right here, if you saw this right here, you could expect the right shoulder to come down somewhere around this left shoulder. Uh, let me clean that up a bit. Yeah, and then you can place your long here. Trying to bet on long that right shoulder with a stop loss below the head and a TP at least to the base. And in this scenario, you would have been rewarded for your hard work and observations. That's not all the time. Like I said, a head and shoulders pattern could fall through. Any pattern could fall through and it could break to the, to the wrong side or the side that you did not bet to, it break to. But those types of structures are all over the place, guys. They are absolutely everywhere. You can find it by placing trend lines and then uh, like I said, you'll end up with something like this. So I don't, I don't mess with this chart. I don't delete from this chart. This chart is very, very sloppy. But if you come back to my Bybit chart where I am actually trading, everything is very nice and neat. Now, I said in my last live stream, you need to be careful. <laughs> it actually happened to me. I was looking at the exchange. I was looking at a different exchange than I was trading on and there was a difference in my spreads. When it comes to scalping, that's very, very important to be on the same exchange. Now I do use Binance as my general larger picture time frame because Binance is the most uh, liquid exchange by volume. They have they have the largest trading volume. A lot of people are trading on Binance. Now you might notice in, in some exchanges there's a difference in price of an asset. That's called a spread. It's because on one asset there's a different amount of volume and different people taking different actions. The market as a whole has to react to that. So what does the general market usually react to? is Binance, why? Because it is the most popular exchange by volume. There's definitely a lot of other exchanges coming up, uh, but generally, if something is occurring in the Binance market, the other markets are going to follow suit uh, very soon, maybe not as tight, it's not going to be as perfect or as concise, but if I have an idea on Binance over the larger picture, and what do you know there? Isn't that interesting, guys? Let me just show you that real quick. Hmm, bearish divergence, interesting. We had a bearish divergence and a long, super, oh, excuse me, super duper long downtrend after that bearish divergence. So someone asked me earlier if I trade divergence. Yes, I do, I love to trade divergence. You know if you're right or wrong very quickly. But here guys, you can see this looks like there's a lot of shit going on here, and there is, there really is, uh, but your chart, and it's just because, just because I'm following simple market structure like this. So like I said, if I go back over to here now, you'll see uh, like all of my trade scratch. This is all, all of this is from today's video, but here you'll see trade scratch. And that's pretty much everything that we had in there. Uh, great bear flag. Here is my bear flag projection, right? Based off of that, let me just, let me hide everything else that we have here. Guys, if you, if you hold shift and click down over here, you can select multiple assets. But here's my great bear flags uh, thesis, right? I'm, 
waiting for that. To, that's that's another reason why I'm staying in this short. Uh, I believe this idea is going to come to life. Uh, May 16th, Discord group analysis. Uh, trade scratch. Week 20 projection. And then I'll set up my projections at the beginning of each week and follow through to see how they're going. And here we just see you know more examples of trade scratch. I think that was like the, the trade scratch that made me take my long... Oh, that was in a different stream. Okay. Yeah. And then trade scratch. <laughs> so I've got a bunch of trade scratches laying around here. And I don't just have it visible all the time because it's definitely going to mess up my ideas. It's going to mess up my ability to interpret data. If I come in here with a fixated idea, so that's why I like to look at the chart naked first to see what I can find and observe, see if there's any differences, any new patterns I'm missing. Uh, like for example, just how we saw this one. If I was looking at this naked the other day, I saw that. I placed my short somewhere around there and entered based off that. And now as price is, you know, price is making, there's new information presented. So I don't want to come, I don't want to just instantly open up a chart that looks like this uh, because then I'm going to have a fixated idea about what's going to happen. But yeah, that is how I use simple market structure to map and give myself a projection or a layout of what to look for next in cryptocurrency. Whether it, Whatever market you're looking at, whatever asset you're looking at, do not neglect simple trend line analysis simple trend lines can go a very 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 long way and they do give you an idea of where a price conflict might be and what type of conflict to expect so let me see here if we have any new comments guys I'm hot super hot please leave in comments all your indicators thanks in advance sir Hope you'll continue every Friday for such a beautiful presentation. Uh, yes, sir, Niaz, I'll leave those in for you right now since you're a supporter and you asked for it. Let me just go ahead and grab that for you real quick. Um, but you know, in the future, I will be doing uh, I will be doing different. Oops, I could just go from right here. I will be doing different things. So in the, uh, sometimes in the past, you've seen me just be a degenerate style trader. That shit's really cool, uh, really fun, and not really informative, but entertaining to say the least. And I definitely want to keep you guys entertained. While at the same time, I want to keep you educated. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to disperse these uh, presentation style videos in with entertainment style videos. You know, the next one I have planned uh, is going to be cryptocurrency. My wordplay on cryptocurrency is going to be, um, it's kind of like a newscast anchor. I'm going to try and have some fun with it. It'd be a little bit funny. So you're going to get different amounts of value and information out of different live streams. So Niaz, thank you for that suggestion. Let me just go ahead and get these for you real quick. I'll copy all these so that you can you can get them if you want. So there's nothing special about my indicators. Um, three commas bot back tester. If you have three commas. Okay. If you have three commas. So the one of these is a back tester. And I, I think I have both of these in my actual EMA video. So one of these is a back tester. This one is the back tester. You can actually input, see what if you want to trade what crosses. So there's only two available. You can trade the different crosses. Here is just a simple overlay indicator because I like to use five EMAs. And no one made an indicator with five EMAs. I looked and looked and looked and looked to the damn library. And then when I published this as a uh, private, like see, they took it down twice. They took it down twice because they said, oh, bro, this indicator already exists. If you're a Pine Square moderator and you're watching this, you can go fuck yourself, dude. They said that it already exists, and I literally have messages that I'm not going to go through, but they left me hanging. Uh, I told them, like, yo, this is unique. I looked and looked and looked. Please, if there is an indicator with five EMA crosses, point it out to me and I'll use it. No one gave me one, so I eventually I just published it as a damn private script because if it's a private script, they don't moderate it. That's the only reason it's private. I published it public twice. I published all my scripts public. The only reason they're private is so I don't get moderated uh, because, like I said, for whatever reason, these guys think they're better than everyone else. So here we go. Uh, there is my trend momentum strategy as well. <laughs> Hi, Diva Mac. <laughs> Diva makes my baby girl, guys. Looks like she's in the stream. She must be on her lunch break. Hi, baby. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's all my scripts, guys. Uh, those are all the ones that I have, that I've got currently, anyway. 
But I work on some more. You can definitely find them in my Discord server if you want the link to that. Um, I don't know where it is. I'm not going to too much, do too much more digging. So, let me see what we got here. So, uh, Johnny says, thanks, buddy. Amazing. Don K says, great info. You're awesome, man. Keep it up. Thanks, Don K. I'm trying, brother. Uh, there's my baby girl. She says, hi. <laughs> there's G-Man. He's laughing. G-Man. <laughs> you laughing at the kiss I just blew? Oh, man. Oh, well. She deserves it. I know it made her happy. All right, fellas. So this is where we do Q&A now. If you have any questions about the presentation I gave to you. Like I said, there's definitely more patterns. And, uh, like, I'm looking at this picture right here on my phone. Uh, let me see. Double top. You know, we didn't talk about that. Uh, double bottom, bullish rectangle, all that good shit. Those are highly speculative. You know, we're looking at candlesticks too. We got three river bottom, yeah, three baby crows. I, mean, I, I, I've never seen a three. I, I mean, I probably have, but never just paid attention to it. What is most important, I would think, is uh, connecting highs to highs. If it's going up, it's an uptrend. If it's going down, it's a downtrend. Lows to lows. Draw a line to connect your lows to lows. Draw a line to connect your highs to highs. And that might seem elementary, guys. Like, are we, are we really trading this? But yes, we are. Because that's all it is. That's all Bitcoin is. Obviously, Bitcoin is not worth 29000 Bitcoin's probably... On the lower end of things, Bitcoin's probably a million dollar asset. Probably upwards of $15 million. If you're paying less than a million dollars for your Bitcoin, you gotta steal. Uh, this is just what the market values it at. And so when we are trading the market, we need to look at, like I said, very, very, very simple things. Keeping it very simple. Simplicity goes a long ways. <laughs> oh, she said it made her happy. I'm glad. I'm glad, baby. So, my fellas, does anyone have any questions, guys? We're going to be taking questions and answers now. I'm going to get some more water. Get some more water. I know, guys, in the past we've done a couple really, uh, I think the last two live streams were like four hours each. G-Man was there for my first four-hour live stream. That was super fucking solid. Thanks for coming out, G-Man. Thanks for being there as well, not just coming out and watching. You were actually on the stream with me. Last week I was doing trade sampling. Didn't mean for it to be four hours. Just ended up being four hours. Uh, today we're not going to be doing a four-hour presentation, and I'm not going to attempt any live trades. Just for today because I already am like I said I'm in that position and I've got quite a bit of my account in that position so I don't want to try and trade it now if I was trading by myself I would trade over that position for sure I would try to reason to get uh, I would try to speculate against it reasonably to where my cross margin doesn't liquidate me because I use cross margin but what I've noticed whenever I do live trades for uh, the live stream I let some things cloud my judgment in trying to be entertaining. So guys, if you want to see me in live trade uh, with this, we can take some live trades in next week's stream based on nothing but market structure. I'll, I'll incorporate a little bit into my cryptocurrency newscast that is next week. But uh, today, guys, I'm not going to be taking any live trades. I'm tired of forcing myself into the red. So I'm going to be taking a break from live trading this stream and we will continue. I have traded live in the past. I'm not just some asshole who talks shit and doesn't know what he's talking about. I have traded live in the past. I've won and lost and I will continue to trade live again in the future. Just not today. So Boytamella says, what is your confirmation on your first entry and your second entry? Um, so let me let me explain that. If I'm going to be trading futures, I do not DCA. If I'm going to be trading futures, it is a stop loss. That is it. If my stop loss is hit, I know I need to recalculate. Now, if I'm trading on spot, which right now, the only spot trading I'm doing is accumulating BTC. I'm not trying to trade my BTC into another pair. So like a lot of times uh, you'll hear me say, guys, you don't have to, you know, outside of shorting, if you're just on spot, you can trade BTC pairs like here. Ada BTC, you know, where's Litecoin BTC? I know I have something drawn on that, don't I? Yeah. So here we can see like, oh, I'm trading, you know, I'm so I'm converting my Bitcoin to Litecoin. Litecoin goes up, I get more Satoshi out of the deal. Not doing any of that right now. Not selling any of my spot Bitcoin because like I said, I don't know where the bottom is and I don't want to be the asshole who gets left without any Bitcoin. 
So as Bitcoin, I still I do think Bitcoin could go lower, but I'm not going to sell any of my spot Bitcoins. Um, I'm just not going to. But I will try to continue to DCA as low as possible. And what I mean by that is when I'm taking profits from my futures position, let's just say I've taken, I made a trade, I made a profit of hundred dollars. I'm just gonna take 10% of that, 10% off of my profit, whatever it is, since it's a hundred bucks, I got 10 extra dollars to buy Bitcoin with. Transfer it from futures to spot, buy the Bitcoin. That's it, very simple. And so after the bottom's done, Bitcoin is going to do another 6x from the bottom, and I'm going to take 6x again on my spot bag. Uh, at that point, at all time high, we'll see how we're going to trickle it out because, like I said, you know, um, having having funds on the spot bag is not really a good idea. We definitely want to take some profits, so that's a little bit of a different method methodology there. So right now, I'm not doing any spot trading. If I was to do uh, spot trading right now it would not be a heavy DCA method or adding to a position simply because of the market structure. So I hope that um, I hope that makes sense as to why I'm not using a second entry. Uh, and as for confirmations, like I said, sir, if I'll go back now to my right here and let me go to my trades taken. So here we have active. So what, what caused me to trade this? Uh, just this break, that, uh, wait, where was it? It was very steep, yeah, I think I connected this point here to that point, because at that time I wasn't skipping over anything. So I always say don't skip the wicks because they're very important. However, in some scenarios you might need to draw like that or like that, just to give yourself a couple different ideas and ranges. We can see obviously the slope's going to be, that's why, because the slope will be greatly affected if you're not connecting the wicks. So I like to connect the wicks based off these wicks, that is why I took that short entry. Oops, but, oops. I'm not going to move that actually. Um, but yeah, that's why I took that short entry was right there. I did not wait for a confirmation. If I waited for a confirmation, I definitely could have got a better trade right here. Right, I could have tried to short that, um, even leaving that to the same place, and even leaving this to the same place. I definitely could have got a better entry on this. But, I did not wait for a confirmation. I'm very aggressive whenever I trade, and I usually don't wait for confirmations, because I know the best part of the profit's gone if I'm waiting for a confirmation. In this scenario, I would have got a better entry, but from what I've experienced, waiting for a confirmation, a lot of times I even get left out if I'm waiting for a confirmation and that's not bad, right? It's not a bad thing to miss a trade because you're not losing money, but you're not gaining money. So sometimes when I look at stuff and I look at a position that I've missed out on, I just think, wow, look at all that money I missed and it almost feels like a loss. So to counter that, I've become more aggressive. And let me see here. So Johnny says, have you made different trades live on different time scales? Like one day, four hours, 30 minutes, one minute, etc." cetera. Uh, Johnny, so I have speculated on larger time frames, but you know, if I'm speculating on the, the one hour, the four hour, the one day, it's not gonna play out in the duration of the live stream. So in the live streams, I try to take positions that can be finished off in front of the audience. Right, because it needs to be entertaining, and I don't want anybody to have any cliffhangers. This isn't like Naruto or some shit where there's a hundred thousand episodes uh, following one thing, and it's just you know filler content. No, I don't like to do that. So if I'm going to be taking a trade on screen, the majority of the times it's one minute uh, because I want it to develop on screen. Because I don't like seeing other traders from uh, from things that I've seen. I don't like seeing other traders cherry pick shit and give the best results and only what they want you to see. And if I were if I were calling swing trades or day trades like that, uh, it'd be hard to keep up with in reality. I mean, of course, I could say this and that happened and you could probably go and backtrack, but it's best in my opinion just to see everything play out right in front of you. And that's why I like to do small time frames. Uh, at least for the live stream. Like I said, if I'm trading by myself, obviously this was not a one minute trade. <laughs> Did not take this trade on the one minute time frame. But that's not to say I'm not taking other scalps within this trade. Just not gonna do it for the live stream. So Boyd Tamela says, same XRP. Hoping it got you to $1. Oh, hoping to go to $1 after the drama is having. 
Bro, XRP, let me just, my, my thoughts on XRP is it's been around for a long time. And I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about its battle with the SEC. I'm not going to talk about uh, decentralization because in theory, it, it really is a nice coin. I mean, the transactions are very, very quick. I just think that um, based off of price action history, it's been around for a very long time with very little growth. So, I mean, we've seen Bitcoin break new all-time highs for the past decade. XRP has been stuck around a dollar since its inception. You know, so uh, just if we're going to speculate on XRP for the next decade, can it be used as an intermediary exchange of value from one person to another in a quick and efficient manner? Yes. Is it going to be potentially the new digital reserve currency? No. Is it going to yield you as big as a profit as Bitcoin would over the next 10 years? Just by holding? No, not based off of the data that's given to us. And so Johnny says, I guess you could be going short on some, some time frames and long on other. Yes, so in that um, tr trade that I showed you, I took a long trade against my larger uh, short trade. But normally, if I have an active short swing, I will try to find short positions because the market's in a downtrend. If the market is downtrending, I'll try to find a position to match the trend of the market. If the market is uptrending, I'll try to take a position to match the trend of the market. And this is simply because if you are trading with the market, you, there's less chance that you are going to be incorrect. Now, you can still be incorrect, but when you're trading with the market instead of against it, your chances of being incorrect are reduced. So that's why I always say trade with the trend because it is your friend. Now, I expose myself to counter trend trades because I like to consider myself a risk taker. And I think, I believe I have a pretty decent understanding of the market. And if I'm counter trend trading, I know where to put a stop loss so that it does not destroy my account. Very often, I have come across people who will say, I don't know why they're taking trades without stop loss, but they're like, guys, I have this, I'm losing this much trade on my position, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's because they have to experience it for themselves. But like, you need to be putting stop losses on those bad boys and limiting your stop losses in any situation. If you want a counter trend trade, especially you need to make sure you know where your stop loss is gonna be and that you do not disrespect it. Counter trend trading is dangerous. Like I said earlier, it could yield the most profits if you get in at the right time, but it's very easy to get wrecked very quickly counter trend trading. And looks like that is the end of the, oh, there's my YouTube, guys. It looks like that's the end of the comments. Guys, if anyone has any other comments, um, let me see there. Yeah, 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 look, yeah, we're at the end of the comments. All right, fellas, so uh, any other comments from you guys or questions, I'll be willing to answer them. We'll go ahead and hang out. I'll hang out for a few more minutes to see if anyone has any new, uh, any new questions or comment or whatever you guys want to say <laughs> go ahead and turn that off now where is that trade at there we go oh yeah that was adjusted there we go you're very welcome johnny thanks for coming brother thanks for coming to the stream and for asking questions i really appreciate that without you i wouldn't be here without you without mr g-man Without, of course, my baby girl, she actually made it to the stream and commented today. I don't know if she's still here or not, but uh, without her, wouldn't be nothing. Without my supporters, G-Man, Niaz, who are here at the stream, and Fat Boy Australia, who's not here, and Andrew Groom, who's not here. Or at least I don't think they're here because they haven't commented. Wouldn't be anything without you guys. So thank y'all. Boy Tamillo says, trading with a trend because it's your friend. Love it. E yeah, easy to remember. Uh, trade with the trend because it's your friend, you know It is hard to forget that easy to remember. So yeah, I say it all the time. You want to trade with the trend for sure Johnny says no question Edward. Thank you. Oh, looks like I skipped one from Don. Oh looks like Johnny 8 Can you have a look at ah, didn't you ask me about LQDR? Yes, Johnny, I will um, Come to the server and I'll share my thoughts on LDQR later. L Q D R. Let me make sure I write that down properly. Okay, Johnny, I've written that down. Johnny, come to the Discord server. 
and I'll plug you out. Let me get this. Let me get the server link there. Somewhere around here, not too far. There we go. All right. So yeah, Johnny, if you're already in the server, my man. If you're not in the server, come to the server, and I'll share that LQDR for you later. Don K says, "What exchanges do you trade with? What is your favorite?" Ah, uh, my favorite is Bybit. Now I love trading Bybit. I love taking futures trades on Bybit. Bybit's up here in the top. I love trading futures. Bybit's great. I also use Huobi often. Uh, I use Huobi for spot mainly. I do not trade margin on Huobi period at all. You have to be verified. I can't get verified I'm using my exchanges with a VPN from an <laughs> unauthorized location. So for uh, for future trading, I love trading on Bybit. It's the only exchange I'll trade futures on. For spot trading, I love trading Huobi. I will trade Gate.io if there is, you know, Gate's got a lot of, of coins. I do a lot of pumpy and dumpy, so spot trading, pumpy, dumpy coins on gates, pretty fun, can be profitable. Um, and I use crypto.com as my on and off ramp, so I convert crypto to fiat through crypto.com, and likewise fiat to crypto through crypto.com. Don't really do any trading on crypto.com. Now I will, you know, if I got some money laying around, I'll put it on there and trade it, but I don't trade a lot on crypto.com exchange. Let me see. Jenny says, great show. Thanks for coming, Jenny. Johnny says, sweet cheers. Don K says, thanks. And then Boy Tamilla says, why buy bits? Uh, because it is very liquid. There's a lot of volume. And the candles hardly ever lack or gap in the assets that I have interest trading in. The candles, if you go to something that's not very popular in volume, like, I don't know. I don't know something that's not very popular in volume. Let me see what we have up here. Uh, all of those are probably very popular in volume, but I'm sure you've seen a chart uh, like probably on the one minute. I could just go into the one minute and see. No, maybe not here. Okay, so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time looking for a chart. Uh, but yeah, here you can see candlesticks are started kind of gappy and breaky, uh, low volume, not really a bunch of volume. If I look at this, uh, I don't have my volume indicator on. I don't even like trading with volume, but... Yeah, if you look at these candlesticks here, you can see the volume 1.1 1. Uh, 1 million for that minute. Trading volume 407,000 here. So let me go back up to Bybit. And on BTC, we're looking at these. And uh, yeah, that's a lot. Well, these are all millions that we're looking at. So there's a lot of trading volume there. And I don't even like trading with uh, the volume indicator on. But there's a lot of volume on Bybit. And it is very good to be trading with volume. If you if you're trading somewhere without a lot of volume, it, it can it can be bad for you. I just like trading where there's more volume. Why don't I use Binance? Because uh, again, I'm in a restricted country. I was using Binance for a while, but they discontinued API connectivity for unverified users. I cannot get verified in the states, so I just quit using Binance and moved to Bybit. And ever since I landed on Bybit, I've been a happy camper, happy trader. Paul Paulson, hey dude, I know I gotta get back to your other comment, but what's up fella? Uh, don't you have too much fees on who will be spot? Bro, there are some fees on who will be spot, but whenever I'm playing who will be spot, it's not for scalping. If I'm if I'm trading spot, it's not scalping. Futures is where I scalp. I put leverage down to make these small movements worth a while. So, you know, if price moves 0.2% with 10x leverage, it's actually 2%, right? So using leverage to scalp on Bybit is great. It's what I do. On Huobi, if I'm trading spot, like I said, it's usually BTC to another coin. Not a lot of USDT trading goes on there. I mean, it does, but it's not for the purpose of scalping, which is what you're gonna lose out on fees. If I'm doing a trade on B on Huobi spot, it's more than likely a swing trade, or at least gonna take a couple of days to play out. Usually has a target percent of uh, 1% or greater usually between one to three percent if I'm spot trading, which I know it's gonna kill me in fees, but it just makes sense, I trust it. I've been there for a long time. I know there's other options out there, but that's why I use Huobi. And then Boy Tamela says, I thought because it has some special features that you're not getting in other platforms. No, I mean, I, I don't even look, I don't even look at these exchanges. I, I do everything on Bybit, or uh, I'm sorry, on three commas. I, I, I don't log into my exchanges unless I need to withdraw money. I never log into my exchanges. I can do, I can pick right here. I have a crypto university account too. So 
I can pick between my Bybit account, the Crypto University Bybit account, uh, Gate.io, Huobi, or this is the Binance account that I'm no longer using but still tracking. I can't, like I said, I can't make trades on this anymore, but still tracking it on three commas. Just so I don't have to log in and see. Well, because also, too, uh, I'm not trading there, but I still have the uh, referral set up there. So if someone does use my Binance link, I still get uh, trading commissions. So that's the only reason I have Binance on here. But yeah, I don't even log into these exchanges unless I need to withdraw money. I never log into them. I do everything from three commas. If I want to trade on my Bybit account, I'll go here. If I want to trade on the CU account, I'll go there. If I want to go to Gate.io, I just click that and blah, blah, blah. So three commas is my, my, my tool, my one-stop shop. Carry three commas around with me everywhere in my pocket, everywhere I go, three commas comes with me. Log in, boom. Do my TA on TradingView, my TA is done. Now it's time to go to three commas, pick the exchange, log in, get to it. I don't even log into those other exchanges. Uh, Johnny says, I use FTX, any good? Yeah, nothing wrong with FTX, man. Uh, I'm not gonna use it, I'm just, you know, I don't need to get set up on a new exchange. I have it. My friend, my, a buddy I know in real life, he's trying to get me to get on Marjex. He's like, oh, bro, liquidity and this and that. I mean, he's a smart dude, good trader. I just don't want to go through the process of setting up another exchange and, you know, diversifying my funds even more. And plus, Marjex isn't manageable by three commas. So, I like to be, I like to keep it simple. Uh, not, I, I'm nothing wrong with FTX that I've ever heard of. I know G-Man uses it, so if G-Man uses it, it must not be that bad. Paul Paulson says, smiley face. Johnny says, not sure about the fees. I should compare the exchanges when I start trading properly. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Check the fees. Uh, in my, in some of the materials I've written and published, I think that fees are very, very important when you're starting off. You need to understand, especially if you have a small balance, you don't want them taking away at your fees. But as I've grown as a trader, fees become completely irrelevant to me. I almost do not, I almost never care. I almost take everything at market price. I almost always take my trades at market price. Uh, my fear of using limit orders is that they get skipped. And I feel like my a lot of times I've used limit orders and they just don't get filled. So, I mean, I understand you're saving on fees when using limit orders, but for me, in my experience, as I've grown as a trader, I realize that if my analysis is correct, the, the profitability will cover the fees. So I don't really even consider fees anymore whenever I'm trading. But when you're trying to find an exchange for you, especially when you have a low amount of capital and you're not really good with TA, fees can absolutely fucking break you. So make sure you're, uh, if you're gonna be wrong, you're gonna lose money anyway. You're going to lose money and the fees. If you're going to be right, you have to pay the exchange for being right, basically. You have to pay the exchange either way because you're using their liquidity and their services. That's what a fee is. You can try to do it on a decentralized protocol. There's going to be a different fee. You can try to do it on a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. There's going to be a different fee. The only way you're going to avoid a fee is if you do this, uh, if you make a transaction with somebody that you know in real life. And even then, you're still going to have to pay network fees. So, I mean... When, you're, when you come to an exchange and trade on a centralized exchange, the fees are for using their exchange and trading amongst the liquidity that they have provided for you. Don K says, nice info. And Paul Paulson says, three commas mobile app on iOS has a lot of bugs. Do you run three commas on mobile phone too? Yes, brother, I have the app and I'm aware it has a shitload of bugs. So I, I can see like right now. Well, I can't hide my balances on there, so I'm not gonna, not gonna show you that. But yeah, just looked at the three, I have the three commas app pretty much trash i use the three commas app just to look at my positions i wake up in the morning i'll go to the smart trade and i'll see look at my positions where are they at okay there's where my positions are um and most of those are swing trades i don't sleep on a scalp obviously but that's what i use three commas for on the mobile app is basically for position monitoring anything else just oh you can even open the browser on your phone uh safari chrome brave whatever and get a much better outlook on what's going on uh, instead of using the three commas app now. I don't know what the three commas app is like on Android I have an iPhone, but um, I don't use the app whenever I'm on the go on my phone since I got this uh, 12 plus pro max really big interface here and I just log on to the internet and turn my phone sideways and do it like that Just log on to my mobile browser on my phone <laughs> Yeah, I don't really I don't really fuck with the app. I have it, but I don't really fuck with it. Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Paul. All right, fellas. 
All right, so any closing uh, questions or comments? I'm not going to run away from the stream. If you guys have more questions, I'll sit here and chat with you guys. I already ate lunch, too. Got a little bit of other work to do, but, um, you know, not going to rush away from you guys. Like I said, y'all my people. So any other questions or comments, guys? I'll give you all a couple more minutes to think about it. If they keep coming in, we'll keep answering them. If not, we'll go ahead and get ready to close off. Okay, waiting, waiting. Paul says, how long have you been trading, Edward? Uh, so as an amateur, I started trading stocks in high school. As a professional, I quit my job in 2020, my day job. I used to, I had plenty of day jobs. I, I never went to college for trading, self-taught from the internet, and I quit my real nine to five job, October of 2020. And I've been trading as a professional, meaning living off the money I make from my trades and crypto portfolio since October of 2020. I started trading as an amateur in high school, I don't know. Maybe in the 10th grade I was messing around. Um, I mean, I always had interest in being like a, what do you call it, a stock broker. Ever since I watched, the, pretty much ever since I watched the movie The Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> Which is not a good uh, movie to use as a role model or influence, but Pretty much ever since I watched that movie, and I think it came out 2011, uh, I've been interested in stocks and never really figured it out. And then finally, I became aware of crypto. Accidentally ended up with Bitcoin in like 2015. Saw the great run up at 2017. Lost access to a lot of stuff, my Bitcoin account. Saw the crash and remained hopeful in the low of 2018. My buddy was showing me, I remember a conversation I was having with my buddy he was telling me how I remember Bitcoin crash. I saw it go all the way up. And I was like, damn, because I didn't take all those profits. And then I saw it come all the way back down. And I'm like, damn. Again, so it was like 3K last time I stopped looking at it. And then the next time I looked at it, it was like 7K. And I was like, yo, so anything I put into Bitcoin, I could have basically 2X'd it. And after that realization, I started paying more attention to crypto and trading and learning more about it and all this and that. Yeah, yeah. so that's how it came to be. And oh yeah, and I realized that stocks were shit, heavily regulated by the feds, mass manipulated by everyone who partakes in the stock market. I bought, I bought into Whitting Petroleum, bro. I was doing TA on Whitting Petroleum and I called that shit, I called the bottom, and then they had a, a split. So the shares became a different percentage value and you got a different percentage of it. Bro, I made five, that was my first huge flip. I made five grand off of the stock market. But what did that exchange do? They halted trading for the split. Yeah. And what happened the next day when trading was resumed? Fucking price crashed and I lost all my profits. That, that was it. That was, that was it. That and the COVID crash. Uh, I realized that when Bitcoin, that moment made me want to pull everything out of the stocks and I had a bunch of coca-cola stocks still uh, because some fucking financial advisor at uh, Wells Fargo told me yo dude I paid for a financial consulting um, appointment and this dude was like look man I'm gonna give you the secret to success if you want to be successful in the stock market bro just buy and hold coca-cola the dividends are there coca-cola always goes up over space and time people aren't gonna stop drinking coca-cola man fuck that dude bro if I was a financial advisor I'd be telling everyone to just buy Bitcoin because when the market crashed I sold uh, uh, most of my coca-cola stocks were for a loss but I sold everything and put it into Bitcoin at the COVID crash and what happened six months later I quit my job <laughs> so you do the math <clears throat> For me, it was Wall Street with Charlie Sheen. LFL, great film. <laughs> Never seen Wall Street with Charlie Sheen, but I'll put it on my list of things to watch. I'll write it down right now. See, so you, you know I'm not playing with you. Wall Street. Charlie Sheen, what a guy. Must be a character. I'll put with Charlie Sheen, because if I look back at that and just see Wall Street later, I'm not going to know what the hell I wrote that down for. Wolf of Wall Street, great film, especially Margaret Robbie. Wow. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, man, I watched that movie so many times. I've watched it so, so many times. I remember the first time I watched it, I had no, really no clue what was going on. 
I watched it not too long ago, a few months ago, I think, uh, was the last time I watched it, just because I haven't seen it in a long time, and I was like, man, I was like, I could clearly understand everything these guys are saying now. <laughs> when he was explaining the IPO, he's like, yeah, he's like, so basically, we bought all these before they hit the market, and then as soon as they hit the market, we sold them all. 22 million in three fucking hours. What is that? It's a pump and dump. Same thing with ICO. You get it before it hits the exchange, it gets listed on the exchange, huge pump. Everyone who bought before the exchange listing dumps. Makes perfect sense now. <laughs> Let me see. Johnny says, watch The Wolf of Wall Street last night. Man, he had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Till he got caught. I've never heard of Quaaludes before. Very educational. <laughs> yeah, the movie. Uh, like I said, you know, maybe he's not the perfect role model, but that movie got me really into it and kind of made me start paying more attention to what could happen and what, you know, what's possible. Definitely opened my eyes. Well, it looks like Bitcoin's trying to pump up, huh? 1H, we have the third pullback going towards 9 EMA. Probably going to be rejection there. Got to go get my... Go uh, Don K, don't, don't want to skip yours. Crypto is the new penny stocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that's right. But all those shit coins are the penny stocks. And then Johnny H says, got to go get my girlfriend. Don't want to upset her again. Thanks again, buddy. See you next time. Toodaloo, Johnny. Definitely don't want to upset your girlfriend. Definitely do not want to upset your girlfriend. All right. All right. Mine's at work. I think she was on break when she was commenting. She's probably not watching anymore. Uh, thanks for coming out, baby. If you're still here, thank you for coming out and thank you for watching. <laughs> and let me see. Paul Paulson says, OMG, great move with Bitcoin COVID crash. How did you manage this last 13 of May crash? Any success or loss? Any great moves? Okay, so this May 13th crash, I mean... Like I said, it was there was we saw this um where was it? Yeah, we saw that structure breaking out right there. So I mean, it was I was already if you go back into uh, our Crypto University Discord, I was tracking Bitcoin um basically right before that fallout and all of my com uh all of my connotations, even on Instagram I posted the same charts. You'll see I had something right here. It's like uh potential support not likely to hold, potential support not likely to hold. And then there's uh, one from these values where I have, where I don't have much confidence in it. So uh, prior to this crash, I was pretty much already tethered. My ledger balance, which is everything that holds my uh, cryptocurrency, I, I don't touch that period, so that wasn't affected. Everything that I had on spot or uh, everything that I had on trading was tethered. I stopped speculating very heavily because I didn't want to be wrong and get wrecked. And when the market started crashing. <laughs> I honestly didn't do anything except laugh. <laughs> it was, uh, I mean, it's sad some people lost so much money. And I've lost a lot of money in the past due to events like that. But it will not happen to me again. If, um, if, if I think the market's going to break down, but I'm not sure, I'd rather just not trade. Now I'm pretty confident the market's going to continue going further. So that's why I have that active short position. And that's why the stop loss was so great. I wouldn't normally wouldn't advise anyone to trade with a 10% stop loss, but that was a hefty stop loss based upon what was happening, uh, what I saw in the market. So I guess the market does call for it, and uh, I definitely could not see that the crash was going to be as epic as it was. Definitely did not foresee how epic it would be because, like I said, I don't have crystal ball. But the signs were there, and uh, it was just easier. It made more sense for me to be tethered than. You know, if it, if, it, if it started pumping and everyone was making profits, you know, I was going to feel bad. But it started crashing and everyone was not making profits and I didn't feel bad one bit. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm sorry people lost money, but I didn't lose any money. So, good for me. <laughs> and uh, let me see, Boyd Miller says, all facts, that movie makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, that was a good movie, man. Good, good movie. I can almost watch it in my head. It's a really good movie. I, I love that movie. Definitely, you know, you know, we shouldn't shouldn't look to be like that. But I guess you know, deep down, we all kind of want to be like that. Have a badass house, drive a badass car. I don't know if you guys like to do drugs, but you know, sometimes drugs can be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not as much as he was doing them every day to where it ruins his life, but you know, 
that type of lifestyle is idolized and um, maybe if it's not exactly what you want you definitely want to be able to provide for your family you definitely want a safe place to lay your head at night and you know me I want some space where my dogs can run around and and live and you know same thing with children you want to raise a family in a safe environment you want to give them you know a backyard a swimming pool everything that you didn't have so uh, maybe if you don't look uh, at the Wolf of Wall Street as you know the perfect idol but we do want to achieve similar scenarios where we're not hurting for money where we're financially stable and we have the freedom to do what it is we want to do with life <laughs> Don K says infamous. So Paul asked a good question earlier, guys. If anyone has any uh, any other questions, if not, I'll just go ahead and wrap it up now. Uh, we could look to wrap it up in about you know, about three to five minutes or so. No drugs, but badass car, house, and girl. <laughs> yeah, and what are those uh, what are those sausages called? Those boar wars? Boar wars? Gotta have some of those boar wars, bro. No shortage of boar wars around here or around there <laughs> whenever you start making money, right? Yeah, we definitely want to eat good food, too. We don't want to be having that, uh, what's that dog food called? Uh, Aldo? Yeah, we don't want to be eating Aldo. We don't want to be eating ramen. I mean, I don't really like caviar, but I want to have the choice. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Me car, Ford Focus, RS, nice. <laughs> yeah, Johnny or Janny said he had some board wars tonight actually. Nice, nice. Yeah, not really sure what we're having for dinner. Um Still got plenty of time to think that though. It's barely it's two forty eight in the afternoon. Fourteen forty eight. Two forty eight PM Boer Wars. Boer Wars. <laughs> yeah, Janny spelled it for uh for the people who don't know what the hell I'm trying to say. <clears throat> I'll bring that in a little bit closer so I can see what that 4H looks like. Yeah, we still got it behind me. Solid, solid. Yeah, yeah. All right. Bartomella says, when you come to South Africa, we'll get you same. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. I'll, uh, I'll be traveling the world one of these days. You know, just got to get some things ironed out. Got to make sure my balance can support that. Definitely don't want to get caught in a bear market a couple thousand miles away from home. <laughs> so got to have everything in line, take care of stuff here. And, you know, ultimately I would like to, whenever I leave my country, uh, I want to travel the states first and see all there is here on this land. And then whenever I leave to travel the rest of the world, probably won't be back for, you know, years. You know, start, just go explore somewhere else so it's nice it's what I have in my head and so yeah I'm not really just gonna be flying out from the States and then coming back and then flying to explore a new place it's not really what I have in mind so yeah I'll, I'll be over there one day brother you better believe it I'll be over there one day as long so long let me knock on wood here so long as I live long enough to see Bitcoin reach <laughs> all that it's expected to I'll be there brother and Johnny says, you should look for S.A. Butchery in your area and ask them for some. You know what? I'll do that. I, here in Austin, there's many different cultures and many different people of every culture. So, pretty sure I can find something here. <laughs> I'll check it out. <clears throat> oh, let me see here on our statistics. Yeah. Nice. So, we still have eight viewers. What's up, eight viewers? Any last questions or comments from you guys? I am going to go ahead. I have to use a bathroom now, so I'm not going to take a bathroom break. I, oh, look. Check it out, though. I did get this cool thing. Um, let me see. Yeah, check it out. Look, I got this. <laughs> so whenever I go to the bathroom now, and you guys, if I'm gone, if I'm just, like, not here, everyone will be like, oh, he'll be right back. He went to the restroom. <laughs> so that's cool. But no, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close the stream off, guys. Not going to come back after the restroom break. So, thank you guys for coming out. I'm not sure if you eight viewers were here from the start. But thanks to everyone who made it out, even if you're only here for a few moments. If you're here for a few seconds. If you're here the whole damn time. Thank you, brothers and sisters. If you're, uh, or whatever you identify as. I don't know. I don't want to get canceled now. 
everyone's all gender sensitive and everything so let me just put it this way thanks to everyone who came out to the stream guys I really appreciate you coming to the stream and without you I mean I guess I could be here sitting talking to myself but it wouldn't be anywhere near as entertaining <laughs> so thanks fellas I'm gonna head out now and I'll see you on the next one big deuce